this video is to provide you with knowledge of Aldous Huxley's life and the world he lived in. This knowledge will allow you to have a richer understanding of his novel Brave New World when you read it. Aldous Huxley, born 1894, died 1963, was a British writer, novelist and philosopher. In 1916, Huxley volunteered to join the British Army for World War I. However, he was rejected because of his poor eyesight. Huxley worked in a high-tech chemical plant in the 1920s. His experience, which he described as an ordered universe in a world of planless incoherence, was a significant influence in Brave New World, which he wrote in 1931. In 1919, Huxley married Maria Nice. They lived in Italy with their young son in the 1920s. At this time, Italy was a fascist society, which was ruled by Mussolini. Huxley's experience of fascism influenced his modernist championing of individual freedom. He feared government controls and he believed that technological advancement and human overpopulation was pushing the world towards totalitarianism. Huxley argued for f human freedom in his interview to Mike Wallace in 1958. Is freedom necessary? As far as I'm concerned, it is, yes. Why? Is it necessary for a productive society? Uh, yes, I, I should say it is. I mean, a, a, a genuinely productive society. I mean, I think you could produce plenty of goods without much freedom. But I think the whole sort of creative uh, life of man is ultimately impossible without a considerable measure of uh, individual freedom, of uh, the initiative, creation, all these things which we value, and I think value uh, properly, are impossible without a, a large measure of freedom. Modernism was the period approximately between 1890 and 1950. So Aldous Huxley was writing in this modernist period. The development of modern industrialized societies, the rapid growth of cities, the horrors of world wars, gender class and race struggles shaped modernism. The period is marked by a loss of faith in God, government and human goodness. The movement away from organised religion resulted in a greater focus on the individual, which is reflected in Brave New World. Modernism refers to the radical shift in aesthetic and cultural sensibilities evident in art and literature of the early 20th century, especially post-World War I. Modernism marks a distinctive break with Victorian morality. In Brave New World, the futuristic society is highly sexualized as individuals pursue happiness. A quick definition of sensibilities, which are the quality of being able to appreciate and respond to complex emotional or aesthetic influences, sensitivity. World War I had a profound impact on both individuals and Western society as a whole. Modernism rose out of the Depression, and the dystopian society in Brave New World reflects the pessimistic attitudes of the time. So a quick definition of dystopia, an imagined place or state in which everything is unpleasant or bad, typically a totalitarian or environmentally degraded one. Henry Ford introduced the Model T Ford in 1908 using the assembly line technique of mass production. He is credited with Fordism, which is the mass production of inexpensive goods coupled with high wages for workers. Ford had a global vision with consumerism the key to peace. In Brave New World, Fordism, mass consumerism, is a religion. And a quick definition of consumerism, the protection or promotion of the interests of the consumers. The utilitarian society that enforces happiness and removes suffering depicted in Brave New World seems to borrow directly from the theories of Jeremy Bentham, who lived in 1748 to 1832. Bentham argued that an action may be considered moral when it maximises happiness for all, or at least for many. The most moral decision is the one that produces the greatest happiness over suffering for the greatest amount of people. Um, and utilitarianism has two kind of ideas, where you're measuring kind of what, what is valuable, in this case happiness, and then the right action to produce the maximum amount of happiness. Now, look, the philosophy of utilitarianism can be looked at really positively. 
And you look if you look at Jeremy Bentham and the ideas that he was championing, he was so progressive for the 18th century. Um, he believed in economic liberalisation, freedom of expression, the separation of church and state, women's rights, animal rights, the right to divorce, the abolition of slavery, the abolition of capital punishment, the abolition of corporal punishment, prison reform, and the decriminalisation of homosexuality. So if you look at him in the modern context, he was an amazing reformer, and I think utilitarianism can be attributed to many of these ideas, which today we kind of look at and go, well, yes, they're morally correct. In Brave New World, children are socially conditioned to fit into their designated castes and not challenge the established social hierarchy. This conditioning borrows from the ideas of Ivan Pavlov, who lived 1849 and died in 1936. Pavlov manipulated events and stimuli to influence behaviour, most famous obviously with his dogs. Pavlov was one of the first scientists to demonstrate the relationship between environmental stimuli and behavioural responses. And we're on the home stretch. Look, just to summarise some of the key points um, from the lesson, Huxley worked in a high-tech chemical plant in the 1920s, and his experience, which he described as an ordered universe in a world of planless incoherence, was a significant influence in Brave New World. Huxley's experience of fascism influenced his modernist championing of individual freedom. He feared government control, and he believed that technological advancement scientific advancement and human overpopulation was pushing the world towards totalitarianism. The movement away from organised religion resulted in a greater focus on the individual, which is obviously reflected in Brave New World. Dystopia is an imagined place or state in which everything is unpleasant or bad, typically a totalitarian or environmentally degraded one. Modernism marks a distinctive break with Victorian morality, in Brave New World, the futuristic society is highly sexualized as individuals pursue happiness. In Brave New World, Fordism, mass consumerism, is a religion. Bentham argued that an action may be considered moral when it maximizes happiness for all, or at least for many. The most moral decision is the one that produces the greatest amount of happiness compared to suffering. In Brave New World, Children are socially conditioned to fit into their designated castes and not challenge the established social hierarchy. And look, that's it. You've made it. Um, the, the music is, the orchestra music is starting to play, so look, I need to go, but thank you so much for watching. Look, if you did enjoy it, please hit the subscribe button on the bottom right. Um, and yes, once again, thank you so much for watching. <laughs>